All right, Kevin, uh, are you ready? It is oh, I am so ready. Okay. Are we really live on YouTube? We are really live on YouTube. This is this is like one of the most exciting moments of my life. <laughs> the moment we've been waiting for. You know, we we finally, after all of our years of plotting and planning, we've taken over YouTube. We're here. <laughs> That's awesome. It's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I'm Kevin Sharp. I'm the, the director of the Dixon Gallery and Gardens, and I want to welcome all of you to wordsmithing. We're going to be talking about how defining some words. We're going to be talking about idioms. If we um, get the chance, we may edit some texts um, that, that you send in to us. We're happy to help. And um, we're going to have a good time thinking about words here at More Than Words or Words and More Family Day, whichever one it is. Miss Karen, tell me which one it is. It is More Than Words. More Than and Words. More Than Words Family Day. Welcome, everybody. We're really excited that you are here. Um, again, my name's Karen, and um, I just wanted to let you know when you get when you get here, we're going to, as Kevin said, be um, maybe defining some words in a little bit. So just put your words in the chat box, and we'll see if Kevin knows the uh, the definition. I know the real? definition the of every word. The absolutely in the world. real definition for sure. Correct. Um, so please put your words in the chat um, and we'll come to those in a little bit. Um, so Miss Karen, how did you come up with the how did you come up with the idea for this particular for this particular discussion? I thought it would be really fun to hang out with you uh, at family day. And um, Great answer. <laughs> I, I love, I love words. I love learning about, I think one of my favorite thing about words is where does this come from? Like, yeah. where did yeah, this, me where, too. right. Um, and so that just seemed really fun. I love listening to shows where they're trying to make up, you know, here's the definition. I'm like, which one do I think it is? Mm -hmm. um, so what, what better thing to do than to bring you to uh, the screen and to, you know, to have fun with words um, together. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And we should also inform, you know, the, the, the two and a half people who are actually watching us that, um, that here at the Dixon, we are known as KS1 and KS2. Right. Kevin Sharp. Karen Strawn. Yeah. KS United. Exactly. Um, so okay. it's, a, it's a pretty powerful team. It's a powerful team. So speaking of words and where words come from, mm -hmm. um, you and I had a really interesting conversation about idioms. Right. Um, so we thought we made we might get this started with some idioms while we're waiting. Why some don't we? Friends. Why okay. don't we? You want to you want to kick us off? Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, we should probably start by just you know kind of defining what an idiom is. And I actually looked it up in the dictionary, and okay. it's and as my dictionary called it, it's a group of words established by usage as having a meaning that's not necessarily deducible from those of the individual words themselves. So they are turns of phrase or expressions that through our, our common and repeated use come to have an accepted meaning that we all understand. And, and it, they happen in every language. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think we'll limit ours to um, to English today, but they do happen in every in every language, and sometimes you know they're sometimes they're downright curious in in where they come from. Yeah. And so, do you have a, do you have a favorite idiom? Um, so one of the idioms that I wanted to bring today, um, because I, it's. It's lunch. It's lunchtime, really. Uh, so of course, it's food. Is piece of cake. <laughs> I think piece of cake. I think us figuring out the origin of this idiom is going to be a piece of cake. Why is what? What is a piece of cake? Delicious is what Delicious. it is. Delicious. Who doesn't like cake? I love a piece of cake. But why would a piece of cake? Like it is not easy to make cake. A no. Piece of cake means it's it's easy, right? Like it's kind of. It just comes very naturally, right? It's not easy to it's not easy to bake a cake. It's but not it's very easy, easy to eat a cake. Right. Oh, very easy. You Guess know, what I will be having after our uh, our chat exactly. Today. But where does that where does that come from? So this comes from the eighteen hundreds. 
um, evidently there would be different competitions and the winner of the competition would get a piece of cake. So now you may, you may have like a cakewalk. Now that's an actual thing. They weren't competing, you know, to get a whole cake to take home, but that was the prize for the competition. So if you won, oh. then it came very naturally to you. It must've been very easy. It was a cakewalk. It was a piece, a of, piece, cake. Of, cake. A piece of cake or possibly, 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 possibly as easy as pie. Uh, we just had actually a request for easy as pie. Easy oh, as pie. Thank you for did, some, are, did someone request that we discuss that particular idiom or were they actually requesting a piece I of I think pie? they were requesting pie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I actually, that actually came from me. Yeah, piece of pie. Yeah. Easy as pie, piece of cake. Piece of cake dessert delicious oh that's a good um, one do you have a favorite idiom kevin well I, there are lots of them there are lots of them um but the one that the one that you know i mean i kind of tried to focus on the the idioms that are that would be you know, like for instance if i were trying to learn english right now if i didn't have this extraordinary command already <laughs> keep a straight face <laughs> um, and I was trying to learn it, you know, I, I looked for the ones that the idioms that would absolutely confound me the most. And mm -hmm. the one I, you know, and I really, it's it, the funniest thing is when you're trying to, you know, when, when you, you know, just run into them naturally, you know, it's just hilarious kind of, and they come to you one after another, after another, but when you're actually trying to think of one, it gets kind of hard, but the one that the one that I came up with that that I re, that I really liked, I think possibly the most is "raining cats and dogs." Yes. <laughs> isn't that great? We actually have done that in a Pictionary game in virtual classes, where really? we do a Pictionary and we do idiom Pictionary, and cats and dogs is draw a little kitty, yeah. little umbrella. Oh little yeah, little. oh yeah. I mean, you know, right. of course we we know that means just, you know, really raining hard, you know, right. I mean, terribly right. inclement weather. And it turns out that no one really knows the origins of that expression. But what if, I mean, what a thing to, whoever made it up was a genius, you know? And um, it, I mean, they think, scholars think that it could be just a corruption of, of you know, the uh, of the ancient Greek. So it could actually go back, you know, you know, 2000 years or something that, that we've been playing with this, this curious metaphor. Um, there's apparently, there's apparently a, a, a Greek expression called um, katadoxa, which means contrary to anything you've experienced or contrary to your, you know, your, your belief. Um, and that's kind of what raining cats and dogs is. It's unbelievable unbelievable rain and while I was researching this this particular this particular um, expression um, this particular idiom I came across a print by um, by the early 19th century English artist George Cruikshank um, from uh, from 1820 and it was a, a, you know a popular print and it's of all these people out in the street and it's raining cats dogs and pitchforks <laughs> it's hilarious and you know these people were under these flimsy umbrellas and you, you know they say had umbrellas but I, you know that was a completely new one to me raining cats dogs and pitchforks Pitchfork. that is terrifying like you know, i'm <laughs> going outside if it's raining cats and dogs i'll put on my little galoshes and like, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean you know no you might catch a puppy you might catch for instance no <laughs> yeah that's yes. Awesome. Oh, that's awesome. So that's, um, you know, favorite of mine. I love that one. Um, I love that one. Um, all right. I have one more for us. Okay. We're, we're getting it. a few words in. But let's sneak in one more idiom. Um, to spin a yarn. I love yarn. <laughs> well, you love yarn. So love yarn. Yes. And this is knitting season yeah. for all you fiber um, lovers out there. Um, to spin a yarn, which means, what does it mean? He said, you know, to tell a tale. Right. They're telling you know, to tell a story. Sometimes it may be, it, it, I, for me, 
it often has a connotation of you know spinning a tall tale. Right. Exactly. You know that it's not just a it's not just a story, an interesting story like you know we tell each other every day at work. Um, you know, it's like kind of an over the top story. Right. Right. Not necessarily factual. Yes. Um, so, origin of spin a yarn. Do tell. In the nautical days, seamen would be spending a lot of time, sailors on the boats, repairing ropes. And it was very labor intensive and very time intensive. So while the sailors were repairing the ropes, they would tell stories of their travels, probably elaborated. And that became known as a yarn. And then they were spinning yarns as telling a long, possibly true, possibly not story. Interesting. Oh, Interesting. Now, so so uh, uh, is a, a yarn, I mean, is, is it, when you, if you look up yarn in the dictionary, is part of its definition a story at Ooh, this point? That would be a good question I, I for wonder, or, our dictionary today. Kristen Allen is going to be joining us. Kristen um, Allen. Yeah, Kristen Allen, outreach coordinator at the Dixon, is going to be our dictionary today. This is a good segue. You want to move over to defining some Well, words? we could, except I want to say one more thing about, about spinning yarns. Okay. You know, and its origins, um, its nautical origins. You know, it's interesting, as I was looking, as I was looking up any number of idioms, you know, uh, I would say a disproportionate number come from sailors. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? I have another one I'll share later, but okay. but that's just something to ponder. Is is it that sailors have that salty language that makes them adept at creating idioms that will endure? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, anybody can you know can make up you know can make up an idiom. You know, I mean, just looking at my desk, I mean, you could be as you know you could be as smart as my lamb. But you know that's you know that's yeah right. or you're it or wise is your it wow right. but uh, you know but I don't really see that one sticking mm. you know and for an idiom to survive you know and we should we should also emphasize that idioms are so such a large part of the way we use language yeah. um, you know it's to create one to create one that actually becomes one, you know, that gets used enough, um, you know, that it, that, it, that it has an accepted meaning. Well, I think that's pretty extraordinary. And I have to give a tip of the hat to 17th, 18th century sailors. That's right. Right. I think we should make wise as a lamp a, a thing. I think we should bring this. <laughs> bring this work on that. Vernacular. Yeah, for sure. You say it every day. I'll say it every day. You know, it might catch. It might catch. Um, we do have, um, just for all our, our, our participants today, everyone who's spending time with us, just to let you know, um, you're adding words to the chat. Kristen Allen is our dictionary.com today is going to be giving those definitions, but I did want to let you know that Kevin cannot see the definitions. Mm -hmm. So as we start moving through defining words, you please put your words. We've already got a great list to get us started. Um, but do keep in mind that Kevin does not know if his definition is the correct definition or not, and then I will give the reveal um, when Kristen shares it. I do have for our first one, yarn, uh, from the idiom, spin a yarn to tell a tale, a narrative of adventures, especially a tall tale. Tres interessant. Well, well done. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, all right, are you ready to define I'm Some ready. Words. I've got and I would, just, I would just remind you, Karen, that all of these books right here behind me, all of these books, dictionaries, all <laughs> it's all I read. Kevin, I think you're spinning a yarn right now. <laughs> That's what that sounds like to me. Could be. Um, all right. Let's get to our list. I saw um, the word cattywampus. 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 Now, first of all, is that really a word? First of all. 
Is that a word? We're about to find let out. Me, let me just let me just throw that out there. You know, oh. is it a word? And you know, I'm guessing. I'm guessing at this point. At this point, Karen, I'm guessing the caddy wampus is a word. Okay. Well, what do you think it means? Well, honestly, I have no idea. But but I would say that it probably has that it has something to do. It has something to do with cats and it has something to do with being wampus. Yeah. Yeah. A wampus cat is probably what this is, what this is all about. And when, when the, the wampus cats in my house get loose and start running around, they knock everything askew. Everything. Sometimes Every, they just do it. Like mess everything with it, right? is sort of, you know, off kilter. Okay. okay. And I think that may be what Caddy Wampus means. All right. Askew. So, so we, shall we go to? Uh, yeah, we, I mean, let's just see. Let's just see. Let's just see. Definition is an imaginary, fierce, wild animal. Definition one. No way. Definition is that the first two. One? Askew. Ah. Awry. I'm afraid dictionary.com has definition one and definition two reversed. <laughs> um, nicely done. Catawampus. All right. Catawampus. Here is another one. All right. Impignorate. I'm going to have to ask for a spelling, Miss Garrett. All right. The spell, <clears throat> the spell is I M P I G N. O R A T E. M. You're spelling ignorate. In pignorant. In pignorant. I guess in pignorant. In, I think in pignorant. Yeah. Okay. No, that's what I know that word. I know that word. Okay. I know that Let's word. Let's see if you do. Oh, I'm telling you. All right. I'm telling you. I know this. I know this word. This is okay. a word. I probably, I probably use this word every day. Really? Yeah. All yeah. right. Let's no, use it. it today. It's common common parlance <laughs> in um in in my office you know in there's hardly a day goes by that that you know it doesn't come up just bubble up in some kind of conversation and of course of course it means it of course it, the meaning of impignorant is is it really starts with swine and their inability to speak english Okay. I think that's it. Okay. It, it's the inability of pigs, pigs. to speak English. All they're, right. Unfortunately, they're impignorant. <laughs> Shut it down. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. I, I'm not even going to look at the definition. I think that's it. You know, in some cases, in some cases, Karen, when I'm wrong, I think they're actually going to change the definition. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. All of the tiny, um, all of the tiny pigs writing the dictionary <laughs> right now are going to be on their tiny typewriters. Yeah, so like, we want it. We knew it. We knew it all along. Um, the definition of impignorant is to pledge, pawn, mortgage. That's definition one. Definition two. Uh, Pigs that do not uh, speak English. <laughs> we'll reverse it. Really? Now, it, now that is a, that is an interesting word. So it means so if you impignorate or impignorate, you mortgage something. You mortgage something. Wow. So I will impignorate my lamp for a piece of cake. Yes, of course you would. Of course you would. <laughs> I wouldn't for pay for of, anything for a piece you know, of I know. That's, that, that's, but you know, you know, ignorant. I would say that's being, that's wise as a lamb. <laughs> Ooh, it's already catching it on. Already we catching it. on. All right, let's look for another word here. We have, um, that was a little draining, by the way. <sighs> All right, here's a fun one. Um, Seely, S E E L I E, S E E L I E. Well, that's oh, that's so easy. 
Oh, that's sure. so easy. You know, that's easy as pie. Seedling. Seedling. I mean, isn't it, you know, first it's a, it's got multiple definitions. It's one of those words with more than with more than one meaning. And you know, the first is the first meaning is very much like a seal. <laughs> seedling. He kind of wiggled a lot, and so we thought of him as being seedling. And the second, you know, I think the second definition is a, a kind of mattress. <laughs> and so, you know, that, that, those are, I should get credit for two on that one. Two, that's a, this is a daily double right here. Yeah, that's a daily double right there. Sealy, a mattress? Uh, well, that's the second definition. Second definition. First is? Seal-like. S Seal-like. Yeah. Seal it's, like. They, they changed the spelling slightly just, Seal. you know, to make it more effective. S E E. All right. So, Seely, let's see. Let's see. Does Chris let's and Alan see, have it? See if it's right. The Northern and Middle English word Seely, also spelled S E E L Y or S E I L Y or S E E L Y. So, the Northern and Middle English word Seely means happy, like a seal. Like a seal. Or lucky. Like a seal. Like a seal. Or blessed. Like, like a seal. seal. After you lay on your mattress. Like a mattress. <laughs> you did it. Well, you know, I, you know, in addition to everything else, I am completely fluent in Middle English. In Middle <laughs> Obviously. Thank yeah, you. You know, just kind of goes without saying. Um, kind of goes without saying. All right. This one oh. is... This one, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce it. Um, with, really, it's the challenge to define is, as much as the challenge for challenge me. Challenge to pronounce. All right, I know. exactly. Are I'm you ready? ready. Here I'm, we go. Bl Blatherskite? 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 B-L-A-T-H-E-R-S-K-I-T-E. -E. I've got Blatherskite. Blatherskite. What a word. Blatherskite? Possibly, but Possibly. doubtfully. I mean, it probably it's it's probably from the German. Right. Right. Well, kite, you know, mm -hmm. um, and that kite was probably originally spelled K E I T. Okay. You know, and to blather, you know, is is <laughs> careful, <laughs> careful. Yeah. <laughs> it's a family show. Um, to blather. Blather. What could blather mean? You know, it could have something to do with um, what we're doing right now, which is blathering on. That's when I said kite. Here, right. <laughs> While holding a kite, right. While holding a kite. Right, right. I mean, could it have something to do with the discovery of electricity? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it's the sound that a kite makes as it swoops. As it blathers. Yeah. I wonder. Weather sky. I wonder. All right. Um, gosh, Miss Garen, this one's kind of stumped me. Well, actually, evidently, it did not. The definition of blatherskite is a person who blathers a lot. <laughs> oh my goodness! A little. It's a little a too close to home. Blathers a lot, and what? And and blathering is. Uninter uninterrupted chatter uninterrupted chatter got it yeah. got it yeah. yeah we know about that right just a couple of blather skites you know <laughs> <laughs> that'll be our next family day session. yeah yeah really blather that's what this one is wordsmithing word smithing and blather skiting <laughs> kevin sharp oh that's rich that's awesome all right um i have oh i have another idiom oh good let's hear it Oh, the blather, blather Skype. Yeah, we got it. Bla blather Skype. That is the pronunciation. All right, here's the idiom. Just in time for Thanksgiving, going cold turkey. Going cold turkey. Going cold turkey, which of course means just to quit something, you know, just to stop doing it, right? I mean, I'm going to stop eating cake, cold, cold turkey. Oh, yeah, that's never going to happen. Never going to happen. But, but that's an excellent use of, of the idiom. 
where on where in the world would something like that have come from? I wonder. It seems you know what. Here's what I would here's what I would predict. Okay. Here's what I would predict. It feels it feels a tad more modern than 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 some of the others that we've been talking about. Mm-hmm. And here's the other thing I would predict. I I bet a sailor didn't come up with it. You don't think so? No, I don't think there's a lot of turkeys at sea. That would be a long way for them to fly. So, you know, I wonder if it has anything, if it has anything to do with, you know, like, you know, they raffle off turkeys and stuff, mm. and, you know, and there were turk, you know, even when I was a kid in rural Missouri back in the 19th century, there, um, there, there were, you know, tur- these things called turkey shoots, and I'm not exactly sure what they, what they, what they were exactly, but you want a turkey. Oh. So I wonder if quitting something cold turkey is like you just give up on, you give up on the idea originally. I mean, in the origin story, you just give up on the idea that you're going to participate in any of these raffles to get a free turkey. Mm-hmm. Be mysterious. I think that I might be it. A wonder. Um, do you have a, do you, is there another idiom that you like? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've got a good one. Okay. I got more than, more than one in fact, but, but the one, the, the, you know, I didn't even really think of this as, as an idiom until I was, you know, kind of scrolling through, you know, on the, on the computer and looking for, you know, looking for idioms and, that, you know, this one, this one popped up and it's very modern, relatively speaking. I mean, and again, has nothing to do with, with the high seas. Um, but it, it really, it caught my eye and I thought it'd be great for today. And that idiom is Elvis has left the building. Elvis has left. Yeah. Elvis has left the building and Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and you, you know where that comes from? You know, you want to know where that comes from? I do. They, it actually, you know, it of course comes from Elvis Presley. Right. And it is something that, that promoters, concert promoters, after one of Elvis's early live performances, they think it, it started in about 1956. After one of his live performances, people wouldn't leave just hoping he'd come out one more time. Oh, for one more encore. One more time. And the promoter yeah. would come out and say, Elvis yeah. has left the building. And just to get people to leave the audience. Whoa. Isn't that great? Whoa. And now it's a, this, this kind of, this, this idiom that people use to, you know, to sort of suggest that it's, you know, time to go, you know, time time, to go. no matter what it is, you know, and of course Elvis isn't there, but Wow. I, you know, I, I just had no idea where that, where that came from. I was tickled, tickled, mind you, tickled. To tickled pink? It. Tickled pink. A, a, another excellent idiom that I have no idea where it comes from, but. I think my guess for that one would be, I mean, when I laugh, I do pink. pink. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you could tell, my cheeks are very flushed from our. <laughs> From our wordsmith, wordsmithing and blather skiting, um, <laughs> tickled pink. So that would be my prob- that's probably it. it. That's probably it. It's come, yeah. becoming you know becoming kind of rosy as you're in right. your in in your amusement. Right, right. Um, all right, I have it. Oh, I have another word. Sounds ominous. It is ominous. It is perci- perspicacious. We're going to say it's perspicacious. No, perspicacious. Oh, here we go. P E R. Yes, P E R. Can you guess the definition and the pronunciation, Kevin? P E R S P I C A C I O U S. Perspicacious. Perspicacious. Interesting. Interest. First of all, I'm quite sure that's not a word. Perspicacious? Maybe it was a. No, it's probably it is it is a word. I wonder what that means. I'm sure it, it, it almost it, it almost sounds like it almost sounds like you know a word you know a word that you know I've never really known the definition of um, that that 
and and now I couldn't even come up with what with what that word is without going to one of my many dictionaries. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it may mean some. It may have something to do with you know a fortunate occurrence. Okay. Possibly. I think it's the check that you do before you leave the house. Phone, keys, wallet, purse, case. Ah, uh-huh. 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 Very clever. It, and maybe it's it's a it maybe it's a, a a search you do before you leave the house. You know, of all of the stuff, you know, the inventory yeah. you take yeah. before you leave the house um, on a rainy day. When it's raining cats and dogs? When it's raining cats and dogs. Um, All right. The definition for perspicacious is of acute mental vision or discernment. Really? Really? So my definition, I would say, was perspicacious. Yes. Yes. Excellent discernment. Excellent discernment. Discernment. Um, oh, I have another idiom. Do you now? I do. Head over heels. Head over heels. Head, head over heels. Now that, of course, that, of course, speaks to, you know, a, you know, a, a, you know, a, an abundant love, right? Mm-hmm. Head over heels in love. Mm-hmm. Or can you be head over heels of, on, of something else? Could you be head over heels with with hunger <laughs> yeah with hunger I, I don't think so I think it I think it really I mean I think I've only ever heard that that term um, connected to you know to deep affection or, and love I think so too and you know it, it strikes me I mean it strikes me as more or less um, metaphoric you mm-hmm. know in that idea that you know, when, you know, when you fall in love that you're just, you know, you're tumbling and falling, right. you know, and your head over heels. Right. Right. You don't, you don't know up from down. Yeah. 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 And I don't know. I don't, I, I, I can't imagine. I would guess, I would guess that that's maybe sort of, you know, not a modern one, like, like Elvis has left the building. Mm-hmm. And not a not a really old one like raining cats and dogs, but maybe somewhere in the middle. Yeah, you know, like maybe would, a nineteenth century thing. I was thinking like maybe Victorian. It sounds kind of literary. It does sound kind of. <laughs> Why are we scowling? Ooh, it well, no, we're not scowling. We're no. just scowling. It does sound know. literary. You know, it's like yeah, I have to scowl to to think about these. Now, are we going to are we going to get the is is Kristen Allen the the ever capable multitasker Kristen Allen not only on dictionary.com is she on idioms.com she or is. idioms are us or she is idioms fully, I have a I have an expression of uh, origin um for the expression uh head over heels also tickled pink was because you uh turn pink with laughter yeah yeah, yeah. good good call. so head over heels is uh, actually, older than we thought originally, oh. the 1300s. You're kidding me. Over heels meant, sorry, it was heels over head. Heels over head. Heels over head. I couldn't, I got head over heels trying to read that. Um, <laughs> it meant literally being upside down. And then yeah. it took its present form in the 1700s. Um, and then the meaning in the 1800s. Say, so, 1800s. Say, say. Head over heels. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, yeah, sure. Those 14th century Europeans could talk about being heels over head. Right. But, you know, that's just not rolling off the tongue. It's not. You know, you need, you need the 1800s. You need the 19th century literary sensibility of Balzac to- or Victor Hugo or mm-hmm. Emile Zola to really, mm-hmm. to really make that one sink in. Head over heels. Um, Ooh, I have another word. Oh, do you know? Be a fun one. The word is, you ready? Huh? Funambulist. 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 I told you it was going to be a fun one. Yeah, F- it is a fun one. A-M-B-U-L-I-S-T. Funambulist. Well, it's clearly somebody who has fun chasing ambulances. <laughs> no brainer. 
No brainer. <laughs> Got to be it, doesn't it? Um, Fun I, ambulance. I, have, I think that I may mean, be it. I, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. Um, I bet ambulance. You know, it, it, fun ambulance. I mean, we're getting, I find that we're getting, you know, sort of prefixes and suffixes that, you know, are really kind of not necessarily going together. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's a hard word. Funambulist? Funambulist. Funambulist. F U N A M. B I L S T. I'm thinking it means that you can draw comics with your right hand or your left hand. You think? Do you think that's it? I bet that's it. it but is. you know, I mean, I'm wondering if it has something about something to do with with movement. You know, like being ambulatory. You know, and um, but the fun part. I mean, it's that's not about fun. I mean, it maybe maybe it's about maybe it's about financial movement. Or um, you're I getting cold. Know. You were you were warm with the the movement. It is um, tightrope walking. Funambulism. Funambulism really? is tightrope walking. So it's, would a funambulist be a tightrope walker? Um, a show of mental agility. Really? Now, did tightrope walking really need another word? <laughs> you know, I mean, wasn't right. wasn't the one. Right. You I know, mean, that's sort of expresses it, it, doesn't it? That is what it is. Walking yeah. a tightrope. That is what it is. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, um, all right. I have another word. It starts with an X. Oh, my gosh. So, and it's not xylophone. Well, then, um, then, then I'm stumped. It is xanthophil. What? Xanthophil. X-A-N-T-H-O. P H Y L L xanthophil. Well, it's, it, it, that, that's I think that's a particular kind of medicine. Ooh, a particular type of medicine. Yeah, I think I think it's 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 a it's a pill that eases social anxiety. Mm, xanthophil. All right. Pill that eases social anxiety. What do you think? I think it is xantho. Xanthophil. Phil. P H Y L. What could that be? Xanthophil. I think it is a. Um... <laughs> you don't think it sounds medicinal? I think it sounds medicinal. It sounds medicinal. I do think it sounds medicinal. I think it is. Um... But I keep thinking of, of chlorophyll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe it's less. Maybe it's less medicinal. Than it is, than it is how, you know, maybe it's something, maybe it's something that preserves something, you know? Um, I don't know. It is any of several yellow to orange cartonoid pigments that are oxygen derivatives of carotenes. So I don't even know what that last word. Means, I think it's alone. like what would change the color of leaves, right? Oh, oh! Did Dale Skag send that? No, Allison Hopper did. Allison Hopper, <laughs> our youth youth uh, garden instructor for oh, the yeah. garden, remind, the garden word of the day. Zen yeah, 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 yeah. Re remind remind me to suspend her on <laughs> promote. Oh, promote. That's right. Right. Um, Those aren't the okay. same thing. Right. Right. It, right. It is. Um, Bob's your uncle. Bob's your uncle. Gosh, you know, I, I know, I know exactly the first time I heard that expression. Okay. You know, I, um, and it was, you know, it was not one I grew up with, even though, you know, even though Bob is, was my uncle. Yeah, I had an uncle Bob. An uncle Bob. <laughs> I had an uncle Bob, but I never heard that expression. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you know, and I guess it, it kind of means, you know, how do you like that? Yeah. Right. Something to that effect. Bob's your uncle. Bob's your uncle, <laughs> you know, and, um, but my friend, my, you know, my friend, Judy Blundell, who lives in Stony Brook, New York, um, 
Her husband, Neil, was curator of contemporary art at the Norton Museum in West Palm Beach, Florida, when I was curator of American art down there. And Judy Blundell is a National Book Award author. Mm. She writes a, you know, writes a lot for young audiences, um, and, um, and, but for adults as well. And she did, she did a lot of the novelization of, of uh, the Star Wars series. Hmm. And so, and we were, you know, we were riding, you know, riding in my car, um, Judy, Neil, and I, and she said, you know, she made some comment and then said, Bob's your uncle. And it was the first time I'd ever, first time I'd ever heard it. So I was in my forties, probably hmm. first time I, first time I heard that expression and I just loved it. <laughs> It's like, well, yes. I mean, at first I took it very literally. Well, yes, Bob yes, is that my is, That is factual, right. <laughs> and then she went on to explain the, the nature of the idiom. Um, and where does it come from? So I mean, the, the origins are uncertain. Um, I, bet it, I bet the origins are Bob. I bet the origins are a Bob. So the, they think that it came from um, a prime minister who was a prime minister, first name, Robert, Mm -hmm. nicknamed Bob, um, appointed his nephew as chief secretary. And it was a very unpopular. Uh So they weren't, they weren't thrilled. He, you know, he gave the, he gave the gig to his, to his nephew, uh, nephew, uncle Bob gave the gig. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Bob's your your uncle. uncle. Bob's your uncle. Right. Um, all right. Well, Kevin, do you, uh, do you have, looks like, um, we have, we have one more, one more, uh, one more, uh, idiom to take us out. Well, we could, we could, we could do that. Do you have, do you have an idiom? I've got, I've, I've, I got, I've, I've got a couple more. You have a couple. Okay, great. Yeah, um, but, this one, this one's from the chat. Okay. Let's, let's hear it. Paint the town red. Paint the town red. You're going to find this fascinating. Because the city of Memphis is doing, a, is doing see, that's the mayor's signature right there, along with City Beautiful. They're doing a, a, um, a program this spring, this coming spring, called Plant the Town Red. Very Plant cool. Plant the Town Red. And... Um, so it's all about, you know, home gardeners and of course public gardens like the like the Dixon and really anyone planning finding something red to plant out in your out in your yard. Awesome. I just thought that was kind of I just thought really that was cool. kind of interesting. Plant the town red. I do love the play on words. So in what is that the town red? I wonder where that I wonder where that comes from. You know, I mean that sounds to me like the kind of thing that probably came from you know, probably came from jolly old England or something, you know, a long time ago. And it probably derived, I'm guessing it probably derived from an actual event. Like okay. some, like some, somebody, somebody maybe had too much cake and, you know, and, you know, got, got, you know, o- over sugarated. Over sugarated. <laughs> Let's and, look at you know, <laughs> and you know got into and kind of got into some mischief and um and found some found some paint found some red paint and mm-hmm. literally started painting you know in their in their merriment mm-hmm. and and from that from that incident it became you know it became painting the town red anytime mm-hmm. you know you're in some mm-hmm. kind of you know in some kind of mischievous adventure painting the town red I, I do. I think that it probably does have a literal. Yeah. Like someone literally painted. Yeah, and, and or I think I bet it's got a good origin story. I bet so too. Um, I think that it paint the town red. I think it looks like the studio after we have summer camp. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Which is a little bit of painting the town red. Um. All right. Well. Yes. You were. Except for the sugar rated part, <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty on. Um, 
The Marquis of Waterford and a group of friends are said to have run riot in through their town um, of Melton Mowbray, painting many buildings in the town red after a night of too much cake. sugar. <laughs> too much cake. They got rowdy and they painted the town. They actually painted the town red. You're the gonna marquee, have a good time. that Marquis of Waterford was just mm -hmm. a stinker, wasn't he? A stinker. <laughs> he was. All right. Do you have one? Well, mm -hmm. I, you know, you know, I I do have one. I got you know. I um, I'll just have to. I'll have to choose. I have. To, I guess the. I guess the one. Oh, they're all so good. Um, I would. I guess I would choose. Beat around the bush. Beat around the ooh. Beat around the bush. Right. And um and you know and, and as 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 you know, when you're beating around the bush, you know you're you are not getting to the point. Mm -hmm. You know you are um, you know you're you're deferring, you're avoiding you know something probably, and um, and that's all become accepted accepted meaning. But what I learned is that it, it, it's an idiom that probably has its origins in in the sport of hunting, mm. and that you know, and you know, in, in Europe, in the 15th century, 16th century, only the nobility were allowed were allowed to hunt. But they would, but you know, because they were nobles, you know, and because you know. You and I were serfs. Well, you were probably a noble, but I was definitely a serf. You know, my job, my job would have been, my job would have been to carry a stick and beat around the bushes to flush out game for, you know, for some, you know, duke or earl mm -hmm. or dauphin, you know, to, to shoot, you know, and it's, it's an idiom that's quite old. It apparently it apparently traces its origins back to or the first the first place they could find it in print was was like in 1440. So you know it's um, it, it it's a, not only an idiom that you know that caught on in the moment, but has certainly endured because it's one that we obviously know, mm -hmm. you know backward and forward. Right, beat around the bush. Well, you did not beat around the bush getting to that origin story, Kevin. <laughs> no, I did not. No, I did not. I sought it out and I found it. You did. You did. But I also thought about how, you know, again, how perplexing that would be if you are, you know, if you have, you know, if you have only a, only a basic command of the English language and you're reading a, you're reading some, you're reading some book and they're talking about beating around the bush. And it's like, you're instantly going to, you know, you're instantly going to bush, bush, you know, it's, it would be, it would be, it's, it's why, it's why learning different languages is so incredibly confounding. I mean, you can build a healthy lexicon, a healthy dictionary in your head of words but until you understand how they how they're put together mm -hmm. you know it's it's tricky mm -hmm. it really is it's so fascinating more i mean that's that's what this day is all about too right is that right. what words have power what we mm -hmm. say um what we don't say right and um and there there are many ways to um to express something and sometimes the shortcut makes no sense at all <laughs> <laughs> exactly awesome um all right well kevin i we we've caught up on all of our chat uh you're kidding me no. did, did, were, did all of those words come from allison hopper no <laughs> she wasn't the only one watching was she can you she tell was not. she was not okay <laughs> thank you everyone so much who was watching and who has been um who has been contributing and thank you to Kristen Allen, our dictionary and idiom.com today. Um, I hope that everyone will keep looking for words um, and yeah. thinking about words and notice when you use these idioms we've been sharing, thinking about where they come from. Um, yeah, exactly. And um, really and valuable stuff, really valuable stuff. Um, 
And we also hope that you, there, we have lots of great content yeah. uh, on our YouTube page, activities, tours. Um, if you, Did if you, you see want Ryan Selznick reading, uh, reading from his favorite children's stories? Speaking of um, great authors, um, Brian Selznick is at Family Day. So yeah, that's pretty are, cool. If you're watching this and you you um, didn't get to it through the Family Day page, please go to the More Than Words Family Day page on our website. Um, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel on this button that's here on your screen or here or here on your on your screen. Sorry, you made <laughs> um, me flinch. <laughs> Um, you can subscribe and uh, see all of the content that we're putting out, you know, weekly, um, go back to some favorites. All of the Absolutely. videos that we have here today are going to uh, to live on our YouTube channel. So you can go back and, and access them. Lots of fun activities to do. Um, we have some great community partners who have, uh, have more videos for making and learning. Um, so please check those all out. Um, thank you so much for supporting the Dixon. Kevin, thank you for words. This was great fun. And, and blather skiding with me today. <laughs> I love we're family day. And, we're going to stay on and keep going, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do this all afternoon. <laughs> um, Y'all have a wonderful day. Thank you for coming to More Than Word Family Day. Go eat a piece of cake. Yeah. <laughs>